Every single year in fantasy, we are looking for those guys that have league winning upside. Those are those players that their current ADP price is not even near what their potential ceiling could be in best ball and in redraft. And today we're going to look at those five wide receivers that we really think could have that big time league winning upside. Those guys that are going to be valued much lower than, you know, what we anticipate them putting up from a production standpoint. But first, before we go into it, please make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and go over and check out flockfantasy.com where if you use our code domain, you can get 30% off any subscription and you'll get a free team review from us. Well, not a free team review, but if you sign up, you'll get a team review from us and you can join our discord. You'll get exclusive videos, exclusive articles, and tons of other things, rankings, all that jazz. So please go ahead and check that out if you haven't already, but let's get into it. And we're going to start with George Pickens here. And I understand there's a lot of There's a lot of concern with George Pickens in his situation, plenty of volume concerns in Pittsburgh's offense, but the fact of the matter is George Pickens as a rookie last season put up 800 yards, and he's currently going as wide receiver 39 on underdog. When you look at ESPN, he's going as wide receiver 36, so very, very close in value, giving uh, your standard redraft leagues a little bit of a tick up for George Pickens in ADP, but 68 wide receivers. I I, I pulled up the road of his screener and I wanted to see how many wide receivers that are drafted in the top two rounds since 2000 and put up at least 800 yards their rookie season. What did they do their second year? 68% of those wide receivers increased their production their second year. And those guys going in that range are guys like good names. They're not good names. They're DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Santonio Holmes, Torrey Smith, Devontae Smith, DK Metcalf, T. Higgins, Deshaun Jackson, Juju Smith-Schuster, CeeDee Lamb, Julio Jones, Andre Johnson, who? Sammy Watkins, Jalen Waddle, Dwayne Bowe, Mike Evans, A.J. Brown, A.J. Green, Amari Cooper, Michael Thomas, Odell Beckham, Anquan Bolden, and Justin Jefferson. So it's an extensive list that kind of has some guys that aren't super good. I don't know if you recognize those names, but George Pickens is in this list of guys. And yes, there were other, there were other players in in this range that ended up disappointing going into their next year. I, I mean, about just under 32%. 30, just under 30% did because there were some rookies that were included there too, like ah, Olave and Garrett Wilson. But these are the guys that George Pickens is now affiliated with after his 800 yard season as rookie year. And I, I think it's fair to assume, I think it's a little bit fair to assume that after seeing this list and after seeing the hit rate from a production standpoint, like, that George Pickens is probably going to improve going into this season. I am not a huge George Pickens stan. I don't love him as a talent. I think he has potentially limited upside long term. But in fantasy going into this year at wide receiver 39 and 36 on ESPN. A whole round later, though. Uh, please, please give me George Pickens at either of those prices. Yeah. Personally. I understand there's clear concerns with Kenny Pickett. I understand there's a question with how much can he really support from a passing game perspective, from a receiving game perspective. And I can't ignore that Deontay Johnson's season in 2022 was a major outlier season. I mean, the guy had zero touchdowns. That ain't happening again. He and got I carted think, off the field today. You know, he did get carted off the field. I mean, that's something to look into. That's something to be concerned about with Deontay Johnson and something that you're going to want to look at with George Pickens. If you got George Pickens shares early and Deontay Johnson ends up being out for a significant amount of time this season, you're flying high because George Pickens is going to be the wide receiver one in that offense if Deontay Johnson is out. I do believe Deontay Johnson is the wide receiver one in Pittsburgh's offense when healthy. That said, I think George Pickens' price – is more it, it is so low that I'm absolutely willing to bite there. I mean, you're talking a low end wide receiver three, and he put up 800 yards last season. He's not going to take a step back. Chase Claypool's gone, and yes, Chase Claypool last year was buns, but that's another guy that's no longer taking targets in Pittsburgh's offense. Pickens was 12th in yards per reception at 15.4 last year. And that's a great value on underdog at wide receiver 39 because you want upside. You want wide receiver one upside, a deep threat, a guy who 
isn't dependent on a ton of volume to produce at a high level. And even though it could be inconsistent, that's all you're asking for at wide receiver 39. You don't care if he's inconsistent. You want him to have wide receiver one upside on a week-to-week basis. And George Pickens absolutely has that going into this year in fantasy, in best ball, and in redraft. Next guy we're going to talk about who also has definitely wide receiver one upside is going to be Gabe Davis. Yeah, I mean, talk about an inconsistent deep threat. Gabe Davis last year was about as hit or miss as you can get. I mean, he had weeks where he gave you... 32 points per game, and he had plenty of weeks where he gave you less than five. I mean, hit or miss. That That's really just a, a great way to describe it. Gabe Davis, though, we've all seen his upside. Everyone has seen his upside. We saw what he did against the Chiefs in the playoffs back in 2021. But Gabe Davis drastically improved from 2021 to 2022 from 7.8 nine to 11.4 points per game. He had 549 yards in 2021 and 836 yards, but in one fewer game. I mean, people were disappointed by Gabe Davis, but it was because he was drastically overdrafted last year. Right now, Gabe Davis, he's going as wide receiver 36, 46 on ESPN and wide receiver 38 on underdog. I am, I love that. Not only does he offer you those wide receiver one weeks where he was wide receiver one overall last week, last year, at one point. He was a top, he had a wide receiver nine finish, a wide receiver five finish, a wide receiver one finish. He had several finishes as a wide receiver two as well. And when you're getting him that late in your drafts, it's a great pick. I mean, I just saw a clip. That, this is kind of funny. You might think this is funny. Did you see the Stefan Diggs clip? No. Stefan Diggs said, if I wasn't here, Gabe Davis would be a wide receiver one. And some reporter asked Gabe Davis about it, and he said, well, when you ask someone as good as Stefan, I think that means something. And then he like got up and walked away. It was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> and, and we're not saying Gabe Davis is a wide receiver one or anything like that, but we have seen his upside, and we're, we're forgetting. The guy is still really young. He's, he's just 24 this year, and he's still tied to Josh Allen. I think he offers considerable upside, and, and really, in best ball leagues, incredible upside. Outside of best ball leagues, when he's being drafted as wide receiver 46, I still think he's a great player to have to plug into your flex, and he's going to offer you game-winning, league-winning upside on a week-to-week basis. When you have a wide receiver who was wide receiver 36 last season on a points-per-game basis going lower from an ADP perspective the following year, and his situation has not only not changed, but gotten even a little bit better with Isaiah McKenzie leaving that offense. Yeah. I know that's not a big name, but that is notable. I think Kincaid fills those targets yeah, pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I I think that's enough I, That's enough to really, I mean, really open your eyes when, when you're seeing his price no, for a wide receiver I completely agree. much lower than what he was on a points-per-game basis last season. I so, completely agree. Yeah. And like Stefan Diggs said, what happens if he's gone? I don't think Gabe Davis is a wide receiver at one, but I think he offers... Uh, his targets would go up, and we've seen what he can do on those targets. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Elijah Moore, and another guy who was just atrociously overvalued last year, and a lot of people got bit by that, and I think people have over-adjusted. I don't think we're all considering how bad Zach Wilson was last year. Well, Elijah Moore, in case you don't pay attention that much, is now on a new team. So he's, he's not with Garrett Wilson, and he's not with Aaron Rodgers anymore, but he's with Deshaun Watson and Amari Cooper, and that's pretty good as well. Elijah Moore is a great wide receiver too in that situation. I think he will excel from the slot and he's going to have Amari Cooper and he's going to get favorable matchups as a result of that. He was 28th on a points per game basis in his rookie year as well as that as that what five game stretch or something like that where he was incredibly efficient. Last year, despite the miserable production, he was top 12 in true catch rate and 12th in target separation while having the 98th worst catchable target rate and 93rd in target accuracy, just to speak to how bad his QB play was. Deshaun Watson last year finished the year horribly. We all know that. But Deshaun Watson, three years ago, was a top QB in the league, and we think Elijah Moore is going to really, really benefit from that. What's he going as right now? Wide receiver 44? Wide receiver 44. Yeah, I love that price. I think Elijah Moore genuinely has a high-end wide receiver three, even a low-end wide receiver two finish in his out range of outcomes. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And these top three guys are honestly 
look, this is a great example of guys where where you don't hate the player, you hate the price. Last and, year we hated the and price. Last year we hated the price. This year they've fallen so much the the fantasy community has overcorrected with their expectations, and now we love where they're going. They don't have the upside that an Amari Cooper has. They don't have the upside that a Deontay Johnson has. They don't have the upside that a Stephon Diggs has. The weekly upside. The weekly upside because those are the wide receiver ones in those respective offenses. But we are looking at wide receiver one upside on a week-to-week basis where they can just boom one week and bust the next. And in best ball especially, that's a value you're looking for in low or or high-end wide receiver four values there in ADP. The next guys, though, are debatably, debatably, wide receiver ones in their respective offenses going into the season. And we're going to start it off with Juju Smith-Schuster, who has a lower ADP than... Elijah Moore, Gabe Davis, and George Pickens, who are the wide receiver twos in their offenses. Juju is in New England now. And yes, he's not tied to Patrick Mahomes anymore, which is a big concern and a lot of the reason why he's fallen in value significantly. But I don't understand, honestly, why this has resulted in him falling so far because we really shouldn't be that concerned. This situation isn't going to get any worse, honestly, because of how the Chiefs function as an offense since Tyreek Hill left. Like Juju, his most his most productive seasons were when he was playing with a statue. In the as statue, a wide receiver too. As a wide receiver too. Uh, yeah. But I think that's the biggest argument here. I mean, his price is absolutely that's fair. We're, we're gonna get into this more. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's fair. But look, there's a direct correlation between Juju's decline and Big Ben's decline. I, I mean, the more he became a statue the less Juju produced, and he started struggling with injury as well. Juju is now the true wide receiver one in New England and has an actual offensive coordinator. His best production came the years he played with Ben Roethlisberger, who was very immobile as he got older, and Mac Jones is not known for his mobility. Mac Jones, if he wants to have success in the NFL and on the New England Patriots, he needs to get rid of the ball faster, and he needs to make the correct reads, and he needs to stop trying to play hero ball and taking these crazy shots downfield in the pocket. He needs to stay in the pocket, stay strong, and he needs to have a hot read, which will be Juju Smith-Schuster in the short to intermediate game. I'm really confident in what he's going to be able to do from a target's perspective. I mean, Juju last season averaged, I think, over 11 points per game. Yeah, 11.6. Yeah, 11.6 points per game. That was a high-end wide receiver three, and... I'm a big fan of his price now at wide receiver 55. Like he's never produced any worse than that for for his notable seasons of like playing significant games without struggling with injury. Like he he's he's not going to be wide receiver 55 in an offense where he's the lead the lead receiver there. No, so. I'm I'm absolutely with you and and we're also forgetting Mac Jones last year is not going to be Mac Jones this year. Last year, he had a defensive coordinator calling the plays on offense, and, and this year, that's going to completely change. I think both of them are are in for much bigger years than people are, are expecting. Yeah. Um, and last, we have another guy who we're just going to call a shot on. Uh, a lot of people aren't going to like this, but at his price, what is it? You find this for me. I believe he's wide receiver 71 70, on underdog 76. right now. 76 yep. is Jaden Reed, and we get it. Why are you calling a wide receiver that is this irrelevant? One, he's a rookie. Two, he's irrelevant right now with his price. And three, he has Jordan Love, who's a first-year QB throwing to him. Well, you look at Christian Watson. Christian Watson, we've named some other deep threats in this video. We've named you know, Gabe Davis and George Pickens as really good deep threats. Christian Watson is an elite deep threat, and him and Jaden Reed will occupy vastly different parts of the field. Christian Watson last year was 15th in yards per target, 17th in yards per reception. He is going to stretch the field, and underneath, we really think Jaden Reed is going to function as a sort of safety belt for Jordan Love. He will be learning. Jaden Reed, coming out of the slot at Michigan State, was a very good wide receiver. He's an excellent separator. He has great hands, and honestly, downfield as well, he can really function and play in that Packers offense, especially when you have, you you know, look at Christian Watson, look at Romeo Dobbs, look at Jaden Reed. They're going to be able to scheme them up. And I think Jaden Reed is easily, I mean, this is an early shot, but I think he's easily going to outperform wide receiver 76. That is, that's crazy to me. That's a wide receiver yeah. seven. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I, he's going to finish as a wide receiver three, range. but I think he's like easily wide receiver 50 or higher in his range of outcomes. And he's he gonna, could be someone who gives us 
650 to 850 yards, three or four touchdowns, and a butt ton of targets next year. Yeah, and that's going to be invaluable at that price. And and with him, the type of receiver that he's going to play, look, we're predicting that the type of receiver he's going to be there is very uh, – Almost fantasy Tyler friendly. Lockett-esque and very fantasy-friendly where he's kind of getting a lot of targets. He is speedy, so he can get some shots downfield, but he's going to be mostly utilizing the shorts and intermediate game where Christian Watson's strong suit is being a deep threat. Like, I don't care what you say or think about Christian Watson, and we're fine with Christian Watson's price from a best ball perspective because of his big play upside, but any projections for Christian Watson outside of deep threat and field stretcher is just as uncertain and unproven proven as Jaden Reed. Well, and the thing is, and Jayden one of them Reed's, is way cheaper than the other. Jaden Reed's not even being drafted in most home leagues. I guarantee it. Yeah. I mean, he's oh, not, yeah, he's not sure. worth being drafted. I'm not drafting in him redraft, there either. In redraft leagues, your home ESPN redraft leagues, you can get him off waivers easy. Absolutely. Like, you, he's not worth a draft pick. Yeah. Yeah, but he has the upside. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So super big fan of his price, which is dang near nothing. It is nothing. Uh, those are the five guys that that we've got for you today with potential league winning upside guys that we think really at their respective prices. You should be taking shots on them here and there in your drafts and underdog in best ball and in redraft. So please make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already and go check out flockfantasy.com where you can get exclusive videos, articles, rankings, and discord and a team review from us. If you use code domain, you'll get 30% off of the subscription there. It is really worth your time, really worth your investment. You will love it. And we're here to help you win your leagues in fantasy and in dynasty. If you play dynasty as well, go check out dynasty domain if you play there as well. So appreciate you guys listening today and watching, and we'll talk to you again later.